Hey, hello and welcome back to the channel. Now, this is going to be a next video on TRPC Nux. The kind of tagline that they have is end-to-end -end type safe API. So if you look at this kind of little animated GIF down here, you basically you, you can see what's going on. And we'll go over this in code is at, at the high level, you're creating procedures on the server. And then here they're using Visual Studio Code. And you can see that the types that you specify here on the server, I love my favorite term is automatically. You automatically have access to the specific types. So you can see here in this query, you're setting the type as a string, you have a parameter called name. And then over here, when you're trying to call on the client side, you can see how it does the type checking for you. So that's kind of the magic of TRPC. That's why a bunch of people like it. Uh, this plugin is built on top of the original TRPC. I'll include both links. Here is kind of the original one. You can see it's pretty popular. A lot of people use it. Kind of this, as you can see, this was just what we saw in the next one. So they kind of lifted it from it. All the features are listed here. Like I said, it, it's uh, it's it's pretty awesome. Once you figure out how to get it going, the uh, this video is going to be a, quite a bit of not quite a bit, but it's going to start out with a bunch of cutting and pasting because there's a fair, I don't want to say fair bit, there's a basic boilerplate structure that you have to set up and build upon top of it. What we'll do in the first part of the video is really just copy and paste the boilerplate code that's required to get your basic server up and running inside of Nuxt. And then we'll start to use the client to provide us access to the queries and the mutations that we're creating in our TRPC server. You can also incorporate the API calls to your TRPC server on the server side in Nuxt. In this video, we're just gonna be making the calls from, directly from the client. All right, so let's get our Nuxt project started and get to the code. Thanks. So we have our terminal window open, made it nice and big, so hopefully everybody can see it. And let's get started first by creating our uh, Nuxt application. All right, so we'll run this. This is just the basic uh, get your Nuxt application initialized. We'll call ours TRPC Nuxt app, and let's let this run. All right, let's change to our project directory. And then here in our project directory, let's start to install some of the libraries that are gonna be needed. So what we're gonna use here is you need to install it to your PC server, the client, the Nux module, and then Zod, which is what we're gonna use for creating a schema around our queries and our mutations and also to do some uh, parameter checking and type checking along the way. Let's install these libraries. All right, libraries installed. All right, let's open up our Visual Studio code and start some of the configuration and getting this boilerplate code copied over. Okay, so we'll get this started first by setting up our Nux configuration to include the TRPC Nux module. We'll just kind of replace all this. So now we made our change uh, required for uh, transpiling the TRPC Nux module. The next thing we are going to do, and like, this is the beginning of uh, creating the boilerplate code. So we need to go into our server directory and let's create a new folder called TRPC. And now that that folder is created inside of here, we need to create this new file called trpc.ts. And also I'll provide a this sample project in GitHub for you to have access to this code. So, so that you can leverage it as a way to get your application started. So like I said, this is mostly template stuff, so I'm not gonna go too deep into it. If you're really interested, you could look in the original um, TRPC documentation to kind of dig down deep into kind of what's going on. Uh, at a high level, we this is how we're going to initialize our server. A context is what will get passed to each one of the API calls. So things that you want to have 
the API calls have access to, you can add them to your context when you create your context, and then all the API calls will have access to them. Uh, this call is actually creating the, the uh, TRPC server for you, and then off of the TRPC off of the TRPC server, the things that we are going to use in this application specifically are, are creating public procedures and access to the router. We're not going to work with middleware. Middleware is very similar to middleware in Vue, so you kind of know exactly what it is. And right here, they, they're they just using a public, we're just creating a public procedure, but there's also ways to create procedures um, that can be um, private procedures or authenticated procedures that we can handle ensuring that the user is authenticated inside of the procedure uh, and reject it if they're not. You can also control access to procedures using middleware. Once again, that's not the scope of what we're trying to do inside of this project. I mean, sorry, inside of this video, it's just an initial video to get you started. All right, so we have our server set up. The next thing is the context, what I just mentioned, you can create a context that will, you can set some things up inside of the context that every one of the API calls will have access to. Um, in this video, if we get that far, one of the things you might want to do is set up your client access to your database or, or just some other server that you know your APIs are going to interact with. All right, so let's create our context file. Right now, we're not doing anything inside of our context or passing anything along. Um, that's, you would you would return it inside of here when you do the create context. So this is all we need to initially to get us started. Like I said, later in the video, we will use this potentially to get access to our database that we're going to integrate into our application. So now we have our context and we have our server. And so let's move on to the next part. And the next is we are going to set up our routes. And so inside our server TRPC directory, we're going to create another directory. And we are going to call this directory routers, similar to what you've seen in other uh, kind of JavaScript route based solutions, you can just create an index file inside of there. And that will be accessed by default when you access the routers directory. We for now we will put our route inside of this just index file to get everything started. But as we move through the application and we start to add additional routes, I'll show you an example of how you can kind of break your routes up separately. So here inside of this file, that I just pasted in. Like I said, this is just boilerplate code to get you up and running. You can see that we have only one router here. Sorry, yeah, one router here. As you can see what's going on here, the input object is how you're gonna pass parameters into your procedure. Uh, this Z is for Zod and what Zod is doing here, you can specify the schema to indicate what type you expect for this text parameter. And right now it's a string. Um, and then if this is validated, then it goes into what we're going to do next, which is implement our query. And as the query passes this input object in, uh, you can see if I hover over this here, you can also have access to the context. Right now, we're not passing anything to context, but this is just showing you how you get past the context to all your calls. And then, like I said, this is just a demo to give you a basic understanding. So what this is saying is that the input that gets passed in, then off of that input object, you take the text. And then what you do is you take the text and you looks like they're just returning whatever text you pass in. And so let's just change this to name to make it clear. And I mean, and you see I was throwing an error because it knows that input only has the type of name. So let's put name in there. So now that's all set. And kind of this is basically how you set up your route. The input part are your parameters. You use Zod to kind of validate the parameters and specify the type then the inputs get passed into your kind of query, and then you utilize your inputs, execute your query or whatever you want to do inside here, and then return the value. Then the next thing is down in the bottom, we also want to export the type of the router. So this will this is how you can see the, if I hover over it, you can see it picked up this procedure along with the type. And so this is how this app router type can be utilized and ensure on the client side what the types are. 
All right, now the other thing we need to do is we actually need to create a plugin for this whole thing. So let's go up to the top here and create a plugin. I believe the name of the directory is plugins. Then we'll go inside of our plugin and let's create this file. And we're going to call ours trpc.client.ts. And then once again, some more basic boiler, some more basic boilerplate here. All right, for those of you feel pretty familiar with Nux, you kind of understand how um, plugins work. You just kind of drop it in the folder, all the plugins will get loaded at application startup. And then you kind of indicate what you want to return. This value will get returned with you know, the standard dollar sign in front of it. And you can, you'll be able to access it using uh, use Nuxt app. And it'll be available everywhere inside of your client application. This is specifying the location of our API for TRPC for the server when we actually create that directory, which we'll be doing next inside of our server API, inside of our server API folder. So this is what that specification is. This is the client that we just created here that we're returning and so it'll be able to be accessed like I said with the dollar sign trpc client from the next application. Once again most of this is actually the bulk of this is basic boilerplate that you have to do just to get your app started. All right now since we mentioned this API route let's go into our server and create this API route. And then inside of that server API route, we have a directory. So we have server, API. Then inside of that API, we have another directory called trpc. And then inside of that, we have this kind of catch-all route. With this weird name, make sure you put the blocks around it. You put the blocks around it, and then you say trpc.ts. And then inside of here, this is kind of where we connect our router and our content and, and our context and kind of return it as an endpoint. So we have our routers and you can see that when we hover over it, there's our one query that we created that you'll have access to through this route. And then this is the context that we're gonna, uh, that we have created that, um, like I said, later in the video, we'll pass some additional content through the context. All right, so now it seems like we have everything on the back end. Let's save all this stuff. So everything's saved. So now we have everything on the back end set up. So now let's go to the front end of our application and put some code in there and utilize the client plugin that was made available to us. Also, let's see if this thing can run. All right, so we have our basic Nux application running. Let's zoom this in, one, two, three. Now, what we'll do is right here inside of our app view, we will just create some client code here. Um, in your application, what you probably end up doing is, you know, like I normally do is use the pages directory, kind of remove the app view, create an index page, and kind of run from there. So let's set this lang equals TypeScript, since that's what we're here about is a TypeScript. And then inside of the TypeScript, we will use our Nuxt app to give us access to the client. So this is the plugin that we created. And so as you can see, when I hover over the plugin, I get access to uh, my client, and then I can you can see my, fun my function that I want to be able to call, or my API route that I want to be able to call. And then the next thing is that we want to do a query. And so when you have a lot of queries, you might want to do a destructure. So I'll just show an example of that here. So we can say const, and then we can assign our, we can assign our TRCP client. And then inside here, we can destructure it. And you can see that our hello function is available to us. So, so we'll just say hello. And then in here, we'll make our hello function call. And so we'll say const hello response all right so let's kind of tie this all together here so after we've gotten our client and we kind of destructured out this hello query if we go back to our trpc you can see that it's going to expect a 
the name parameter. And so when you hover over this, you can see it says use query. When we call our use query, we're going to get a greetings object back that contains a string. And then when we specify the call we're going to make is we're going to just do the use query, like I said, and we'll do the use query so that we can just get a, a sorry, we can get a response back that will be reactive. And then we know our use query requires a uh, parameter called input. And the only valid types for, uh, sorry, the only valid properties for input are name. That's the one we're going to use. And then we are going to say Aaron. And then we should, and then let's close this out. And then if you look at our response, our response says that we're going to get back a object with greeting on it. And this returns a promise. So let's put our await here. And then now if we go down here and let's just do a little bit of typing here so we can take a look at what we have access to in our hello response. So if I type hello response, you can see we get back the data, which is basically the response. We have access to error. If any error happens, we have some state information. So if it's pending, there's a refresh call that you can use if you want to kind of programmatically uh, force it to execute this query again. There's some status information that you can also get back. So for now, we're just going to utilize the data. And so what we'll do is we'll go up in here and we'll say DRPC test. And then under here, we'll just dump the result that we got back. So if we'll say P and then here we can just say hello response dot data. All right, and that, now let's save this and take a look back at our browser. And you can see we have the greeting returning hello response dot Aaron. And let's just change this again, Aaron again. And we get our result back. So, that, so that's the basics on how to use the TRPC Next module. That is mentioned here. I encourage you to kind of check it out. Um, also, be, be sure to also take a look at kind of the original source material here. A lot of good stuff here. Um, also, there's a lot of example folders that you can look at to give you an idea of how to kind of implement some things in Nuxt. The, there's also this uh, TRPC Nuxt documentation that's provided. Well, yeah, here it is. That kind of walks you through pretty much what I did also. Uh, I just wanted to kind of go through this myself and kind of follow along and see if I could get it to work. And I did successfully. And here's this video for you all to give a go. I will probably add a little bit more onto this video. Like I said, we, you know, we created our context. And so let's see if we can connect this thing to a database and kind of get some actual queries that interact with the database. But I just wanted to get the first part out as a template for you, because in the next video, I will probably use a better SQLite um, to query the database and do some things. And if you're not into SQLite and I had integrated into this video, you'd have to kind of unwind it all. So this is the base video source code that I get checked in at GitHub. You can use this as your template to kind of try to get your own TRPC Nux applications going. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, and subscribe, share with your friends, and I will talk to you later. Bye now.